Welcome to our week 19 SAT vocabulary study. At the end of this video there will be a homework assignment that you will place on the opposite page in your ILJ. That homework assignment will require that you have internet access and um, will require that you go to dictionary.com. So please make sure you stick around at the end for the instructions for the homework that accompanies this week's vocabulary notes. This week's notes will go on page 39 of your ILJ. And this week we have all nouns. And once again, like last week, I have related them to our current study of the Holocaust. Our first word is depravity. And depravity is um, a synonym for wickedness or um, criminality. And you'll be looking up some other synonyms of depravity in your homework assignment. And again, our uh, photos and sentences this week will relate to our study of the Holocaust. The sheer depravity exhibited by the brutality the Nazis imposed on prisoners is unimaginable. And again, these are all nouns this week, and I know sometimes we struggle a little bit with nouns, especially the abstract nouns like this one. You have to think of them as things. They are not adjectives, so they don't describe other nouns. Uh, they are not action words. They're not verbs. So please pay close attention to how they're used in sentences because they are acting as things. And you will be needing to write some, some things, some sentences, as it turns out, with your uh, vocabulary homework. Our next word is edict. And an edict is some sort of order issued by someone in charge or a decree issued by someone in charge or some governing body. For those of you in second and third period who are reading night, um, this was one of our um, section vocabulary words as well. The Nuremberg Laws were a series of edicts that legalized anti-Semitism and the persecution of Jews. And this is something that we'll be talking about in class this week of how the uh, Nazis justified um, calling the Jews a race instead of recognizing them as a religion. And this particular poster or chart um, explains that. And it's based on who your grandparents were. And I'll show you this in class. Our third word is forbearance. And someone with forbearance has patience. They have great restraint, meaning they hold back even when there are times when they might be angered um, or impatient. Um, or it also represents um, a great deal of toleration someone might have for um, inequalities or how they're being, being treated. It is difficult to imagine how any Jews in the ghettos would have the forbearance in regards to their desperate situations. And actually, I inserted the word the before forbearance. It does not belong there when you're using it as a noun. Um, we'll also be discussing the ghettos this week. And I want you to remember this picture because I'll refer to it in the classroom as um, an example of some of the things that the um, inhabitants of the ghettos did to survive and the risks they took as well um, in survival. Our next word is ostracism. And this is exclusion from a group. So someone might suffer from ostracism or they might experience ostracism if another group or person ostracizes them or shuns them or treats them like a pariah, one of our old words from very early this year. In the ni early 1930s, the Nazis indirectly tried to force the German Jews to emigrate. As a result, Jewish citizens experienced ostracism from public life after they were fired from public and professional positions and were ostracized from the arts, humanities, and sciences. And we discussed this in class um, um, when we were discussing the history of uh, what took place 
after the Nazi takeover and up until and even after the war began. Our next word is veracity. And veracity is uh, truthfulness, truth, um, and accuracy. So if um, you fill out some paperwork um, in order to apply for a job or some sort of position your, um, or a college application, the individuals receiving that application might check to see um, whether everything that you have written is truthful or not. So therefore, they will check the veracity of what you say. And here we have um, a photograph of Hitler. The veracity of much of the information you find on the internet about Adolf Hitler is questionable. Therefore, it is important to refer to reliable sources. And that's the way it is for everything that you study, especially very polarizing people or events or ideas. Um, sometimes people will post just anything on the internet. And actually, if you Google in Holocaust, you will find websites that pop up pretty early in your search that deny that it ever took place. So again, veracity or truthfulness and accuracy is extremely important. Finally, empathy. And empathy is the sensitivity that you will have to another person's feelings as if those feelings were your own. Um, it's a little different than sympathy, which is feeling sorry or for someone um, because of their situation. The study of the Holocaust teaches us, at least I hope that it teaches us, empathy and tolerance for others. So next up will be um, the homework assignment for this week. Please pay close attention and please do your own work this week. Um, and for those of you who are looking at this video and doing the work as is asked of you, I would strongly recommend that if a friend or a classmate asks you to copy their your work, that you politely say, no, I can't do that. It's not right. Um, I know it's taking place and it's very disappointing. The only persons that suffer are the persons who don't do their work, but it's not fair that you do your work and then just let someone else benefit from it. So lecture done. Let's move on to the next slide. So this week's homework will um, require that you um, look up each of the words on dictionary.com's thesaurus option. And so you just put in dictionary.com, um, get to the first page, and then click thesaurus, and you can type in each of the words in succession and um, look, at the defin or look at the synonyms. I want you to record the first five synonyms for each word. Normally, uh, they are listed in order of relevance to the original word that you put in. And I'm going to show you an example here. So here's one of our words from last week. Um, I've clicked on thesaurus up here. I've typed in one of our old words, repulse. And down here, I have the synonyms. Okay, In this particular case, this is the noun repulse. It's, um, uh, but there are there's adjective and uh, so anyway just want to make sure that um, you you make sure that um, you've got the right word in there anyway I digress anyway here are the first four actually there are a couple below it um, synonyms for repulse and um, <clears throat> you'll just document what those first five words are that are in this column. And notice that they are colored in various shades. The darker the shade, the more relevant it is to the original word. And actually, I might say this is a different form of repulse than what we learned last week, so don't let that confuse you. All right, so I'm going to go back. Um, now, with a new understanding for each of those words, and my hope is, is that you've looked up def or you've looked up synonyms, and that will help you deepen your understanding of the meaning of the word. I'd like for you to think of a topic. Notice this week that I chose the topic of the Holocaust. 
I do not want you to change to select that same topic though. I want you to pick a topic of your own. Um, and you know, find some common ground that all of those words have. And then I would like for you to um, write a well-developed paragraph in which you use each of those vocabulary words. So your paragraph will have an overall topic. Let's say, for example, it's bullying. Okay, and that might be a good topic to choose. So I'm kind of giving you a hint there, but there are many, many others. Um, and then you will write an entire well-developed paragraph um, using each of those words. I think the hardest one that you might come up with or that you might run into is edict, um, a law or a decree. But I have faith that you'll be able to find a way to incorporate it if you really um, think critically about the assignment. And also, um, challenge yourself to think outside the box. I mean, you could even make something comedic about this um, as opposed to something real world and, um, you know, serious. So try to consider um, creative alternatives. Let's put it that way. I want you, the, the objective of this assignment is to challenge you to use these words and notice that there can be a connectivity to them. So create a story if you want to and then write a paragraph.